Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're gonna have some fun in the play queue with this ridiculous five color battles deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. The goal is to cast and transform our invasion of Alara. The five color battle when it enters exiles cards from the top of our library until we exile two non-land cards with mana value four or less. We get to cast one of them for free and the other goes into our hand. So it's like we get to double cascade with this five mana card. Then invasion is a seven defense counter battle so it does take a lot of effort effort to transform, but once we do, we get to cast the five color sorcery Awaken the Maelstrom, which says target player draws two cards, we can put an artifact from our hand straight onto the battlefield for free, create a token that's a copy of any permanent we control, including some of our battles potentially, distribute three plus one plus one counters among one, two or three creatures we control, and destroy target permanent and opponent controls, can even take out their land if we wanted to. So Awaken the Maelstrom is an amazing card if we get to cast it, and to help us in our quest to transform our battles. One of my favorite inclusions is Render Inert. Can remove up to 5 counters from a target permanent and we get to draw a card. So this is a great way of transforming our battles as we can remove defense counters from them. Now by itself it's still not enough to transform our invasion of Alara since we'll still be left with 2 defense counters but that's where an invasion of Tarkir can come in handy dealing at least 2 damage to any target when it enters. Can also deal additional damage if we can reveal a dragon from our hand and we are running Moonveil Regent which has has excellent synergy with Invasion of Alara, which we'll get to in a second. Can also use Into the Fire to deal 2 damage to each creature, Planeswalker and Battle, so that's another way of transforming Invasion of Alara after removing 5 counters with Render Inert. And there's also the scenario where we just cast 2 of them, or actually attack or battle with some of our creatures. And then to help find Invasion of Alara, we're also a Storm of the Festival deck, and Storm of the Festival is pretty synergistic with all these battles, since they are permanents with mana value 5 or less that we can find among the top 5 cards of our library and put them straight onto the battlefield. And all these battles often have a sorcery-like ability, so it's pretty unique that Storm of the Festival is actually putting these battles into play and potentially even removing opposing creatures with Invasion of Innistrad, giving a creature minus 13 minus 13 until end of turn, so that's a pretty cool action aspect of this deck and then we can also flash it back for 10 mana once we generate enough mana with cards like Invasion of Zendikar which can find two lands. We've got our Topiary Stomper which can find a land when it enters so the curve of Stomper into Invasion of Zendikar is especially powerful if we can keep hitting our land drops and then have seven lands in play after casting Invasion of Zendikar and potentially even transform it in the same turn after attacking it for four and getting the Awakened Skyclave as well which can also attack and block and even add mana to potentially help us ramp power to storm the festival and flash it back. And then Timeless Lotus is also a nice 5 mana permanent that we can find with Storm the Festival. And it's also an artifact we can put in play for free if we actually cast Awaken the Maelstrom. And then once we get to untap with it, it makes 1 mana of every color, so perfect for casting another Invasion of Alara if needed. And then as I mentioned, Moonveil Regent is also great here. A 4-4 Dragon saying whenever we cast a spell, we may discard our hand and if we do, draw a card for each of that spell's colors. So if we curve Moonveil Regent into Invasion of Alara, we could discard our hand, which may be empty, and then draw 5 cards. And the same is true if we cast Awaken the Maelstrom once we transform Invasion of Alara. That can also help us draw 5 cards with Moonveil Regent. And when Moonveil Regent dies, it deals X damage to any target, where X is the number of colors among permanents we control. So that can also sometimes deal 5 damage on the way out if we have our Invasion of Alara in play. And then we also have one of Shieldred the Apocalypse as a powerful card we can potentially play for free with our Invasion of Alara and can also help us gain more life against the aggressive decks after we draw a few cards after maybe casting or Awaken the Maelstrom. We also have four copies of Courier's Briefcase as a two mana artifact that is essentially a treasure so we can sacrifice it for one mana of any color. Also makes a 1-1 citizen that can help us block early on and we can also pay one of each color, sacrifice the briefcase to draw three cards. So in the grindier matchup that can be an excellent way to refuel after we trade some cards back and forth and then of course can also gain us more life with Shieldred in play. 
And then two copies of Invasion of Ergamon as another cheap way to make a treasure, discard and draw, can also improve our hand. And similar to the briefcase can help us set up a turn 3 Invasion of Zendikar, which can then set up an early Invasion of Alara or Storm the Festival as well. And then if we actually transform Invasion of Ergamon, which we can do with Render Inert, we would get the Cliff Charger, which is a 3-4 Trampler. When it enters we may discard a card. If we do, search our library for a land or battle, reveal it and put it into our hand. So this can actually find our Invasion of Alara if we don't have one already, which is pretty sweet. And then Invasion of Tarkir is also excellent alongside Render Inert, can cast it turn 2, maybe take out a smaller creature, and then turn 3 already transform it by removing 5 defense counters, and get the 4-4 Flying Trampling Defiant Thunder Maw, saying whenever any dragon we control attacks, it deals 2 damage to any target. So that applies to the Thunder Maw itself, but also to potentially our Moonveil Regent, if we already have one in play, can immediately start dealing damage when it attacks. And then Into the Fire, besides dealing damage, can also potentially improve our hands, since we might have some clunky opening hands. This can help smooth things over, especially for not up against a creature deck where the 2 damage is useful. And then a Stomper is great with our Invasion of Zendikar, as we mentioned, can also help us ramp and fix our colors, and eventually turns into a creature that can help transform our battles or help close out the game as well. Now it does require 2 green mana on turn 3, and that's why almost all the dual and tri lands in the mana base will produce green mana to help us cast Stomper and to eventually cast our Storm of the Festival as well. The only exceptions are Rafine's Tower and the Xander's Lounge, but they're still nice to have to help cast Invasion of Alara, can also be cycled late game for flooding out a bit, and then then uh, we've got a few green dual lands as well here, and then plenty of basics since we need to surge those up with our Invasion of Zendikar, as well as Topiri Stomper, so we don't want to run out of lands to surge up. So yeah, that's kind of our deck in a nutshell. It's a pretty crazy concoction, don't expect it to be a very competitive deck, but hopefully the games will showcase how fun it can be when it goes off. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand does need a third land, but then we could curve Stomper into Invasion. And then ideally find another land so it can attack right away. I think that has enough upside here that I should keep. Any third land will do it. Opponent on a green aggro deck with Pack Leader, and there's our island. Okay, so get to play Stomper. Still hoping for another land to actually attack with Stomper. But at least casting Invasion of Zendikar sets up our Invasion of Alara. Deep Root Wayfinder, also a nice 2-drop when we can block it. What do we get with Stomper? Probably a Swamp. Hope that Wayfinder doesn't mill a land. It's gonna be a Renan 7 instead. And Stomper for the opponent. Okay. So can't Invasion of Alara, could Invasion of Zendikar, although wouldn't be attacking with Stomper just yet. It's our only option. Can get maybe another green source for Storm the Festival, and then either red or white. So we can actually cast our Invasion of Alara. So we're at 10, Wayfinder triggers. And they kept the card on top. Okay, Storm the Festival, yeah, that can be cast now. Likely finds at least a land to put in play, so Stomper can attack. The alternative is just cast Invasion of Alara. Timeless Lotus might be a little slow here in this spot. So yeah, let's Storm. And we hit Invasion of Zendikar and Invasion of Innistrad. So we can take out the opponent's Stomper, although it's pretty far from attacking and blocking. So maybe Wayfinder is more threatening, or even the Human Monk which can make mana. And attack one of our many invasions. Okay, so we're on the board, and next turn we can have some fun with Invasion of Alara, potentially transforming it the same turn we cast it as well. Polucronos can get in the way. So, step one, Invasion of Alara, I imagine. And 
we hit Moonvale Regent and Invasion of Tarkir, which is a pretty spicy combo. So I can cast Invasion of Tarkir. Question is, do we already have the Moonvale Regent in hand to reveal it? I guess it doesn't really matter since I can either way uh, cast a Render Inert and then two damage is enough to transform more Invasion of Alara. I uh, don't have the mana to necessarily cast the Render Inert and Invasion of Tarkir, so I'm going to have to cast this one for free. And yeah, Moonvale is in hand, so I can deal three damage here if I'd like. And let's just transform our Invasion of Alara. Even though there are some other sequences we could uh, go for here. Such as transforming Invasion of Zendikar first and then potentially attacking it. So we'll get to draw two. We get to destroy Polukronos, hopefully. And put a Lotus in play. And we get to copy... How about our Topiary Stomper here? And add some counters. So... This seems good. Get another land. And we still get to attack here. This one goes for Innistrand, this one goes for Tarkir. Put on double blocks, take out Wayfinder. And make a couple of zombies. Yeah, we got to full value Invasion of Alara transformation, putting that Lotus into play as well, unlocks even more mana next turn. Vorinclex will have to be dealt with. Could even cast our Moonvale Regent and then cast Invasion of Alara to draw fresh hand. So those are all options. Might want to render inert, transform Invasion of Tarkir first. Cast Moonveil. Play the untapped land. And Invasion of Alara. Discard my hand. Draw 5 seems fine. Don't really need Invasion of Argamon. And there's another vendor inert. Cast a free Invasion of Tarkir. And then... With Render Inert, I can transform Invasion of Alara yet again. Decline now. This is pretty sweet. And that can finish off Vorinclex. Oh yeah, our deck is going off. So we would get to take out Vorinclex, put Briefcase into play for free from our hand, let's not forget, get some more plus one counters, copy another one of our permanents, perhaps a Thunder Maw, and then uh, draw two more cards, and that's just going to be game over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's got potential. Briefcase into Invasion of Zendikar. Can help us ramp out Storm the Festival. Got a lot of basics, which is not ideal, since we'll eventually run out and we don't necessarily have the most mana fixing available. And wow, Spell Pierce actually countering our Briefcase. I guess rather get briefcase counter than invasion, but opponent might just do both. Let's into the fire and uh, go digging, since I'm nowhere near casting shieldred. Opponent considers. I think I need to keep storm the festival, but stomper and shieldred can go. Okay, so still won't be able to cast invasion next turn, but at least have the land for it now. Opponent spell pierces again. I'm glad to get those out of the way. And next turn, hope to resolve invasion of Zendikar. But opponent's probably gonna deploy a threat soon, whether it's Hadi Jin or Tolarian Terror. 
Hardy Jin with a one mana untapped can still represent a counter spell. But have to go for it here. If it resolves, get planes and maybe another forest. Already have double black. Okay, so now with more mana, we can potentially pay for the conditional counter spells that they might present. But Hot Agent also presents a fast clock. So next turn, if I draw an untapped land, I could potentially render inert invasion and then storm. But if they have interaction, that could go poorly. Yeah, Poon's just trying to grow Hot Agent as much as possible here. They might have a protection spell to save it from removal. And try to kill us in two turns. Yeah, that's 10 power. Don't have any edict effects to get around, let's say, a hexproof trick. Found Invasion of Alara. So if I cast it, I can pay for Make Disappear or Spell Pierce at least. Or we can Dream Big with Storm the Festival. Although I feel like Invasion of Alara is probably what we're hoping to find with it. So let's give this a try. Resolves. And Invasion of Innistrad is exactly what we needed, but unlikely to work out here. Take out Haughty Jin. And is it a slip out the back, perhaps? Nope, that actually worked. Caller me surprised. Play Briefcase. Could see Fading Hope the token, that's fine. So they could have bounced their own Haughty Jin, but didn't. Which is a bit surprising. But they just had another one. Now we can actually shrink it down with the Invasion of Innistrad if we transform it, but probably not fast enough to keep up. So what are my options? I can render inert, transform any of my battles except for Invasion of Alara. Transforming Invasion of Alara has the highest upside if I can manage to do it, but that also requires us to draw into another Render Inert or Invasion of Tarkir to deal two more damage here. So that's unlikely. So in that case, maybe go for Storm the Festival, can pay for Spell Pierce or Make Disappear once again, and then hope to hit another Invasion of Alara or Invasion of Innistrad, pretty much. Moonvale Regent, I guess, could keep us alive. Grab a Stomper. But if they have another Fading Hope, it's still over here. Probably no point in casting Invasion of Argamon. Alright, does our opponent have an answer to the Regent? If they were to destroy it, it does deal 5 damage on the way out, but Blue's not going to destroy, more likely to phase it out or bounce it. Just a Talarian Tower. And another Hot Egen. so yeah, looks like the Regent is successfully holding off Hot Egen. So we're somehow still in the game. But now we do need to find an answer to double Hot Egen. Now if I attack with Moonvale Regent on Invasion of Alara, if they take it, then I can transform with Render Inert, hopefully. If they block, then I can finish off both Hot Egens. So that might be the plan here. Okay, so a big moment coming up. Does Render Inert resolve? Decline to draw. Awaken the Maelstrom, we get to draw two. Destroy Haughty Jin. And then now I probably want to draw five. And put a briefcase in play for free, and copy Moonvale Regent, I think, over Invasion of Innistrad, but that's also an option to take out Haughty Jin. Yeah, let's um, copy Invasion of Innistrad. Get some plus one counters. Take out 
take out Hotijin. All right, our deck is going off. Now what's next? Can storm the festival, can play another invasion of Alara. I guess this is pretty sweet, or we can get a shield root going to maybe gain some life back. Um, let's see. Now let's go for shield roots. Decline. And then I'm a little short of casting another invasion of Alara, so let's play Stomper. And our opponent has seen enough. Wow, what a close game. Thought we were dead for sure, but uh, somehow got back into it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Invasion of Argomon could be cast on turn 2, setting up turn 3 regions. Could also save the treasure to ramp out a turn 4 Timeless Lotus, which is going to give us a nice mana boost. And then I can discard to find a bit more interaction, perhaps. Or dig for Invasion of Alara, which would be sweet alongside Lotus and Regent. Well, let's see what our opponent's up to. Turn 1 Mountain Phoenix Chick, so Red Aggro is going to be a tough matchup. Might have to just cast Regent as soon as possible to present a blocker. Shield is not bad, I guess. Especially turn 3. So I don't think I'll have time for Timeless Lotus, no pun intended. Just gotta make plays that immediately affect the board in this matchup. So we can curve Shield Road into Regents. The one of Shield Road is gonna be pretty nice against a Red Aggro. Opponent's got a Lightning Strike, plus a play with Fire, presumably, to finish it off. Well, still uh, a 2 for 1. And they weren't able to add anything to the board this turn. Play Regents. Next turn it can attack Invasion of Ergamon, and then Invasion of Tarkir can finish it off, perhaps. Mechanized Warfare means Phoenix Chick hits for 2, but they're not even going to attack. So they don't have a play with Fire in hand, we can conclude. And the Render Inerts could be pretty nice, can transform Invasion of Argomon. Or, as we said, we can uh, just attack it and then keep Render Inert to transform Invasion of Tarkir, which I guess we can do both this turn. So yeah, let's try that. So start with Invasion of Tarkir. Decline. Deal 2 to Invasion of Argomon. Then Render Inert get our Thunder Maw. And then now, still gonna decline. Attack Invasion of Ergamon, transform it, and we get to deal 2 damage with the Thunder Maw, since the dragon's attacking, so that's why we had to sequence it this way. And we get to grab our Invasion of Alara, I'm still going to decline here since I'm just going to draw 5 once we cast Invasion of Alara. And there we have it. Well, this is about as good as it gets against Modered especially. Thundering Raiju looks pretty small compared to our creatures, but I guess it does still attack favorably. Can just take the hits. And transform our Invasion of Alara next turn. Play land first since I'm going to draw 5. Let's see what we hit. A render inert, I can cast for free. Go after invasion. Decline. And find another stomper, so... What if I go face with everyone? That's 11 plus 4... 15 damage, so not quite. So these want to go face. Finish off Thundering Raichu. And then with the transformed Invasion of Alara, we can take out Mechanized Warfare, and the our opponent has seen enough. Copy Thunder Maw, get some plus one counters, take out Warfare, draw two, and our opponent's hopelessly behind. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is not great. 
could maybe into the fire to get rid of some cards and then maybe go invasion of Zendikar into invasion of Alara could still work yeah I guess it's maybe worth trying if we're up against an aggressive deck we can cast it as a two damage sweeper and if not should be able to draw into some lanes to set up invasion into invasion of Alara but we will need a third land of course put on blue green and there we go so yeah let's go for it now Render Nerds, Invasion of Innistrad, maybe one Invasion of Zendikar as well, although I could keep both in case they counter the first one. And there we go. So now we can cast our Invasion of Zendikar, get Plains and Island. And then we'll see if we want to play Moonvale first or Invasion of Alara. If we play Invasion of Alara, once we have a Regent in play, we could immediately draw five cards. Opponent with an Ivy, so it could be a Poison deck. In which case, Into the Fire would have been a pretty nice sweeper to deal with a bunch of Rot Priests without triggering them to apply Poison. But we'll see. Nope, just a research on Ivy. So they're going to get to draw a card here. And it also has a ward 1. Okay, a render nerd could transform Invasion of Zendikar if I'd like. But then I'm going to be a little bit short of casting Invasion of Alara. So I think that's probably better. Could also still play Moonvale Regent as a blocker for Ivy. And play a briefcase. But uh, yeah, let's try the Invasion of Alara. Probably has higher upside. Could have played a briefcase first just to make a 1-1. But we'll see what else we find here. Shieldred and Invasion of Innistrand. Okay, so now with Invasion of Innistrand I could try to take out Ivy. It's likely not going to work. Since their opponent might have some protection spells up. So how about a free Shieldred instead? That does resolve. So now we can at least punish the opponent for drawing cards. And then next turn with Shieldred we could attack or Invasion of Alara and then transform it with a Render Inert. Opponent at 16. Another research on Ivy, so now has Ward 2. And there's a Storm the Festival which we could cast. But uh, let's start by attacking Invasion of Alara and see what happens. That works. Yeah, I think we try to transform it here. Okay. So there's Awaken the Maelstrom, we get to draw two. We can attempt to destroy Ivy, even though we'll have to pay Ward 2 and it's unlikely to work. So could instead destroy one of the combat researches or a land. Let's go for the research. They could still phase out Ivy to protect it, but that's fine. Yep. So hitting a land might have worked out even better but put a free briefcase into play and then copy invasion of Zendikar I think couple counters on Shieldred and then I could still play my dragon if I'd like And then next turn we could storm the festival, we could play an invasion of Innistrad. There's a Rot Priest after all, okay. No poison yet, so it's gonna take a second. Ivy is still attacking, so they likely have a pump spell to protect it. And then apply poison at the same time. I think I just take the hit. 
and then trying to outrace them. Okay, it's going to be a march of burgeoning life to start with, getting another Rot Priest. So yeah, we could potentially just die here. Opponent gets to draw two. But takes a bit of damage of Shieldred as well. Down to ten. We have an Into the Fire to deal two damage. Which could certainly come in handy. But opponent gets another Rot Priest first. Axe equals two, so not enough to copy with Ivy, but enough to get another Rot Priest. Three cards in hand, we're at three poison. So even if they cast something on Rot Priest, copy with Ivy, we should still be alive at least. Could start by casting into the fire, deal two damage to everything. Opponent's gonna protect Rot Priest in response. And then I have Invasion of Innistrad as an option. So maybe still finish off the Rot Priest and attack for the win. Yeah, that seems reasonable. I'll decline on the Moonvale Regent here. Safekeeping. And since Invasion of Innistrad is not a typical spot removal spell, it gets around the Rot Priest's poison ability. So now our opponent doesn't have any blockers left. They will still gain a bunch of life off Tamiya Safekeeping. But we'll see here as the dust settles. Opponent at 12. We can attack for 11. Opponent takes their draw step for turn and dies. So yeah, very close one here against the poison deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a pretty slow hand. No turn 2 or 3 accelerant to set up our invasion of Zendikar. So might have to mulligan. This is better. We'll still need another green source, ideally, to cast Stomper. And then maybe ditch into the fire, even though it does give us some interaction, which we may need. But uh, this way, we are more likely to just ramp into our invasion of Alara. So an untapped green source would be ideal. If not, I'm gonna have to use Briefcase to cast Stomper, and then we're still potentially on track to cast a turn 4 invasion of Alara. Opponent's blue-black, so could expect some removal and counter spells. Removal we don't mind, counter spells are a bit more problematic. Karn's Silex, okay. Did not find the untapped green, so we'll have to sack the briefcase here. And then I can play Rafine's Tower. So I could still just get a forest here, I think. Although, what am I more likely to draw? I'm probably more likely to draw the forest. So in that case, I might want to get island. So this way, if I draw forest, or plains, or even swamp, I think we're still good. Otherwise, we'll just have to wait one more turn. Bonus gonna use Silex, that's fine. And there's the untapped lands, and this should do it. Cast Invasion of Alara. And Invasion of Zendikar. Would have been even better with the Stomper still in play, because then we can immediately attack it, but not gonna complain. Get at least a forest and maybe a swamp so we have double black. And we can cast this turn the festival. If they counter it, hopefully we'll get to flash it back. A render inert can also help us transform our battles. But Storm the Festival seems a bit more powerful here. And then I don't think I want to use Briefcase first just to make a 1-1 since I'm potentially going to use it to draw 3. Erta is going to counter, but we get to draw a response. And Invasion of Tarkir can potentially be combined with Render Inert to transform our Invasion of Alara next turn. Hey, that's a go, okay. So 
So for opponents playing a combo deck, they could put something powerful on top. Another invasion of Zendikar. So if I first play Briefcase, even though I would get to put it in play for free with our Awaken the Maelstrom, I'll at least get to put the plus one counters on the token. So that may be worth it. Yeah, I think that's the plan here. So we want to remove five counters. And then cast our Invasion of Tarkir. And then I'll get to draw two. Probably still destroy Hidetsugu, even though we could go for Land or Airtai instead. Just gotta hope they don't have their 7-mana uh, sorcery on top of the deck. And then I can copy perhaps Invasion of Tarkir, or make more mana with Invasion of Zendikar. Could also be worth it. Yeah, let's just get more mana going. And our opponent has a Path of Peril. Okay, deals with a token. That's alright. So, could have been a better turn, admittedly, but uh, still making quite a bit of progress. Ooh, Jace is gonna now mill us for 15, so opponent's likely playing with uh, the 7 mana sorcery as well to get it back. Now if they mill us, they also give us more copies of Storm Festival, but our deck's not really known for closing out the game quickly. Opponent just deciding to use a minus 2. Okay. Flashback Storm. And can pay for Make Disappear, but they might just have a Negate instead. Alright, it resolves, but only finds two lanes. Not the most exciting hit. So next turn we can flash back again. Could draw three with briefcase. Hope to find something else. Now our opponent's gonna mill us. 22 cards remain. And there's Breach the Multiverse, so that's just game over here. Get back Jace, mill for 15. And that's all she wrote. Yeah, this seems like a pretty tough matchup if her opponent can combine Jace with Breach. Our deck's a little bit too slow to really beat the mill deck consistently. Bonum gets our Stomper back as well. But it's not going to be necessary. GG's. Jace mill for 15. 12 cards left. Math checks out. At least we get to see the sweet new mill animation. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn to Invasion of Argomon, could transform it with a render inert and then get our Invasion of Alara, for instance. Although not sure if that's the plan. Turn 1 Duress is gonna mess with that plan. Might just take Storm the Festival. Could go for Invasion of Argomon as the only early play. Takes Render Inert instead. Okay, still down to Invasion of Argomon since it gives me the opportunity to maybe cast a 4-drop next turn if I draw it and an untap land. And then maybe one Storm the Festival can go since we have another one now. Opponent Junt Colors with a Scribe Gorger. Okay, did find a 4-drop, but no untapped land. And now Scribe Gorger can exile Storm the Festival, unfortunately. Shakedown Heavy. Okay, so our opponent's a fight rigging combo deck. So now I might have to Invasion of Innistrad, clear the Shakedown Heavy to prevent the opponent from going off. It's definitely the safest play. And then I should just main phase it if I'm gonna go for it. In case I have any protection spell, although, let's see. 
I guess our opponent could play Archfiend, and then I want to take that out instead, but then I would have to either let them draw or take six. So I'll just deal with it now. And then next turn we can Zendikar, turn after, storm the festival. Also, fun fact, if our opponent does actually run out an Archfiend, we could win the game if we draw Render Inert to remove all its oil counters. So that's a neat interaction to keep in mind. Okay. And there's another shakedown, so our answer was short-lived. Invasion only deals 2 damage here. And then gets certainly a planes. The second one doesn't matter too much. Alright, does our opponent have fight rigging? And if so, what can they find with it? No fight rigging. Do I want to take six or let them draw? I can probably afford to take one hit here. I guess we're taking nine since Scribe Gorger also grows. Downside of letting them untap Shakedown is if I were to transform my invasion of Zendikar as a 4 4, then they can block with Shakedown Heavy and prevent me from maybe further transforming something. But uh, yeah, either way, we're gonna take a bit of a beating. Okay, now Invasion of Innistrad answers Shakedown Heavy, or we could just storm the festival, although it's not gonna get flashed back because of Scrap Gorger. I think I still give it a shot. The upside's definitely higher. Find Stomper and maybe Briefcase as a way to refuel. Can also help me double block Shakedown Heavy. And. Pass it back for now. They likely have some removal in hand that they haven't had the opportunity to cast. Scram Gorger stays back. And we could see removal on Stomper, kill the 1 1 for free. Nope, trade happens. Okay, opponents definitely taking a risk by not immediately exiling Storm the Festival. If we had an untapped land, I could have flashed it back before they got a chance to exile it. But sadly, we didn't. So now, I'll probably go for Lotus, develop our mana. And uh, I can still Invasion of Innistrad at instant speed with Briefcase, but ideally, we save it to draw three. So now they can get rid of Storm the Festival. But yeah, once we cast it, it would have been too late for them. And playing a land does not use the stack. So it was a bit of a risky move. If we find a dragon, Invasion of Tarkir could deal 3 damage, enough to transform Invasion of Zendikar. I'll just take 3 here. Would rather keep Briefcase to draw 3 cards. Opponent might just have a bunch of expensive cards in hand that they were trying to cheat into play with fight rigging. Find another briefcase, so yeah, can use Lotus, draw three. And there's our dragon, so now Invasion of Tarkir deals three damage, which could transform Invasion of Zendikar, could also go after a Scram Gorger, set them back on mana a little bit, which I don't mind. All right, so we got to see our five color battles in action and certainly got to see some very exciting games along the way. Now, of course, this is not going to be a very competitive deck on the ladder. Once you face more streamlined decks, you're often going to be overwhelmed before you can set up all these cool synergies. But in the play queue, you get away with a few more things, and so we got to see the deck perform the way it's intended to. But again, don't expect this to be a very competitive choice. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.